One of the biggest things that I hear new real estate investors say is that they don't have enough money to invest. But did you know that you can start investing with just $10,000? That's right, you don't need some massive $60,000 down payment or a giant wad of $100,000 for a renovation. Just saving $10,000 is enough to get your foot in the door for your first rental investment. Before we get started, I really want to say thank you to our sponsor, Rent Ready. If you're ready to take control of your rental properties and love your life more, make property management software like Rent Ready your companion. Rent Ready will allow you to manage your rental stress free and automate tedious tasks like collecting rent, rent reminders, tenant screening, and delegating maintenance responsibilities. Why stress when you can live the life you love? Say goodbye to endless paperwork, missed rent payments, and back and forth phone calls. Upgrade your real estate game with Rent Ready, make your business better, and build a life you love. Now, I know what you're thinking. Henry, you need money to invest because you need money for down payments. You need money to find the deals. You need money for random maintenance items that pop up. So if you only have 10K, can you really invest in real estate? And I'm here to tell you, yes, you can. And you can do that right now. Starting with number one, we are coming in at utilizing your primary residence. Now, a lot of people call this house hacking. I want to avoid that term because there are many ways to air quotes house hack. And I don't want you thinking of just buying a duplex. But when you are investing and utilizing your primary residence as your investment, it gives you an advantage in the loan area, which means you can use primary residence loans like a VA loan, which requires a zero down payment or an FHA loan, which requires only a three and a half percent down payment or a conventional loan, which would only require a five percent down payment. You can even use like a NACA loan, which has no down payment and no closing costs if you go through the tedious process involved with with a NAC loan. And so when you think about these loan products to buy your primary residence and then monetize that primary residence as an example, you could buy a house for about $285,000 on an FHA loan that would net you with about a $10,000 down payment. Or if you were going to use a conventional loan at 5% down payment, that means you can afford up to about a $200,000 house before you hit that $10,000 threshold. So those are the price limits that you can get at. But with like a VA or a NAC loan, you could get even higher because you don't have to bring a down payment so you can potentially afford more depending on what you buy and what you qualify for. Now, the reason I didn't want to call this house hacking is because if you use one of these primary residence loan options to get yourself into a property and then you want to monetize that property, you can traditionally house hack it, meaning you can buy a duplex or a triplex or a quadplex. As long as it's four units or less, you can utilize one of these loans and live in it and rent the other units out. That's what most people think about when we're talking about house hacking. But there there are other options for house hacking as well. You could buy a single family home and you can monetize that home through a number of different ways. Maybe you Airbnb one of the bedrooms that have a short term rental within your primary residence. Maybe you get a long term roommate. I had a long term roommate for a long time when I first moved to Arkansas when I was living on my own and I supplemented my rent through that roommate. You could rent out extra garage space or storage space that you have in your house. You can rent out a pool if that house has a pool pool. You can rent out the pool to people who want to come use a pool at a house, or you could curate a cool room in your house, make it look super nice, and then rent that room out by the hour to people who want to come film social media there, film commercials there, or whatever the case is. If it's a cool curated space, somebody may want to pay you to use that space. All these, to me, are ways you can house hack. And to me, house hacking just means monetizing your primary residence. So use a low down payment option to buy that house, and then use one of these options to monetize that house. And that can help you get started right now with a as little as $10,000. Coming in at number two is utilizing some of the free ways to find deals. Now, if you're going to try to find good real estate deals, it's going to cost you something. It's typically either going to cost you time or it's going to cost you money. And since we're talking about only investing with $10,000, you should utilize some of these ways that don't cost money, but maybe they cost you some of your time to find these deals. So networking is going to be one of the best ways to find deals, but you've got to network with a purpose. You have to be intent on what it is that you're trying to do. And so you need to be letting everyone know that you are a real estate investor and you are in search of your next property. Social media is also a great place for you to find deals. We have a window to the entire world. All of your friends are either on Facebook or Instagram or some other social media app, LinkedIn. They're everywhere. And so that's a place where you can tell everyone what you're doing and tell everyone what you're looking for. Make a post that says, hey, I am looking for my next investment property. It's a single family home in this neighborhood, in this town. And then you could even 
even say, I can monetarily compensate you if you find a deal that I end up purchasing. Now, if you are an agent, this isn't something that you can do unless the person you are monetarily compensating is also an agent. And there may be some laws in your state around if you can compensate someone for sending you a lead. So make sure you do the proper research to determine if you can do this. But if you can in your market, it's a great way to incentivize people to help send you leads. Every time I make a post like this on social media, I get leads, not just for deals, but for contractors and for private money, real estate agents. And so this could be a great way not just to find your deal, but to start to build your team. And it's completely free and everyone can do it right now. Another great resource is Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. People are already out there posting properties for sale on these websites. Right now, you can go look on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace and potentially find yourself a deal. Now, it is not always going to be that easy. Typically, if there's a good deal that pops up on one of these sites, it's gone super quickly. So you have to be very diligent about spending time each and every day looking through these websites, weeding out all the retail price stuff and looking for the actual deals. But I promise you they will pop up from time to time. But if you're not actively looking on a daily or weekly basis, you're going to miss these things. It takes relentless consistency when looking for this. I should have said this at the top of the video. All of these things require relentless consistency. It will not be easy to find that deal. But if you do these things with consistency, the deal can come. And then you can also make offers on on-market properties, right? It's free to make offers on on-market properties. You just need an agent that's willing to submit those offers for you. Now, the caveat here is you're not just going to be making offers at the asking price people are asking for because you have to buy it at a discount. You're going to have to make offers typically at less than what they're asking. But what is in your favor right now is interest rates are still fairly high. And so the people that are trying to sell right now don't have a huge buyer's pool to sell to. And you also want to be strategic with how you're looking for on-market deals. Don't just start looking frivolously. Look for the type of properties that fit your buy box, but then look for some other motivating factors. You want to look for things like if the property has been listed on the market for 60 days or more, you want to look for expired listings. So it had been listed, but nobody bought that property. And so that listing expired. You can also look at what kinds of potential properties could I buy and then turn them into multifamilies. Maybe you can find a single family with a mother-in-law suite and it's only listed as a single. And so people looking for duplexes may not necessarily find that deal. But if you find a single family that has a mother-in-law suite, you as an investor can turn that into a duplex. So you try to get creative with what you're looking for on the market. But the key again is you have to make a lot of offers. All right, next we're going to talk about seller contingencies. In this real estate market, it is very easy to ask for contingencies if you're a buyer because there's not a ton of buyers out there and people who have their homes listed are trying to get them sold. And so since these market dynamics are working in your favor, you can ask for contingencies. So what you want to do is work with a very savvy real estate agent who understands what types of offers are being accepted in the current market. If they're an active agent doing deals, they'll know on their past recent deals what type of contingencies got accepted. And so they can give you some insight onto the types of contingencies you can ask for. Maybe it's a reduction in price. Maybe it's asking for some or all of your closing costs to be covered. Maybe it's asking for a home warranty. Maybe it's asking for a contingency to add toward the renovation budget on your project. Also, don't be afraid to ask for under asking price. Just because they have it listed at that price doesn't mean that's the lowest price they'd accept. So be willing to offer less than what's being asked and be willing to ask for some of these contingencies. All right, next we're going to talk about partnering. If you have the time and you can go find the deals, then you can bring in a potential partner that is a money partner and they can fund the deal. There are lots of people who want to invest, who have the money to invest, but not the time to invest. And if you can align yourself with those people and you can be the boots on the ground, you can do the work, you can do all the things that take the time that this other investor doesn't have to do and they can then front the money, then that allows you to to be able to have 50% of your first deal. And 50% of a good deal is better than 0% of no deal. So think about partnering as a strategy as well. It's also great if you're partnering with somebody who has some experience because then you're learning as you're doing the deal. Now, the caveat here is you can't just partner with anybody. You want to make sure your goals are aligned and do a lot of research around partnerships and how they work and how they should be structured because it's not something you want to jump into willy nilly. But if you're networking with other real estate investors, you may find yourself around people who would 
would love to have a partner who's going to do all the work. I bought 16 units like this earlier this year. I found the deal. I brought in a money partner. They fronted all the cash. We bought the deal together. We're 50-50. It works for them because they're not involved and they make monthly cash flow. It works for me because I got into a deal without having to use any of my own money. Maybe you only have 10K saved up because you've been investing for a while and you're taking your money and you're putting it back into your investments. Creative financing could be an advanced strategy that you could use to get into your next deal. The most popular creative financing strategies are owner financing and assumable loans. So when we're talking about owner financing, that's when a property owner already owns that property, typically free and clear. So there's no loan on the property. And if there's no loan on the property, you could potentially ask that seller if they would be the bank and finance the house to you and so you would make your payments to the owner instead of making your payments to a bank after getting a loan. What's beneficial about this is that you can get creative with how you structure that loan. You need to find out what's important to that seller. Maybe that seller wants a large down payment and that wouldn't work for you. But if that seller is not concerned about the down payment and they're more concerned about just getting monthly cash flow each month, you might be able to work out a payment plan or a payment schedule that works for that seller that doesn't require you to put a down payment down. I have done an owner finance deal where I bought three houses from one seller and they did not want a down payment. It was not what they wanted at all. And so we were able to get into those three properties with no down payment. They just were concerned about what the monthly payment was going to be. I also bought another owner finance deal where the owner only wanted about $10,000 down because he needed 10 grand to go and pay off some credit card debt. You just have to figure out what the owner wants and then structure the payments in a way that fits what they want and what you want. And so you know you only have a $10,000 down payment. Well, then you can structure your owner finance offers to either include you putting 10k down or less or putting nothing down at all. You can also look at assumable loans. So assumable loans mean that you could potentially take over the payments on someone's loan. VA loans tend to be assumable. There are a lot of different assumable loans. Now I want to give a big caveat here. There are a lot of ins and outs to assuming loans and I don't have time to go through all of those things in this video. So please do some research on what are assumable loans, what are the risks of assumable loans, and then determine determine if that's a strategy that you think would benefit you. But both of these things, assumable loans and owner financing, you can look for on the MLS. Sometimes owners who are open to these things have their realtors put those terms in the comments of their listing. And so you can do a search on the MLS through your real estate agent or do a search on Redfin, Zillow, or Realtor.com for these specific terms. And you might find some properties where the seller is open to one of these two options just by doing a quick search. All right. So there are a few ways that you can get started right now with as little as $10,000. But just because you have 10 grand doesn't mean you need to spend 10 grand because we want to be able to do this again. Right. So keep these things in mind as you're preparing yourself for what comes after your next deal. You want to make sure that we streamline this process as much as possible and try to save costs as much as possible. So use management software like Rent Ready with all your management tasks in one place to give you more time to work on your next investment. Make sure you get a CPA who can help you maximize the tax benefit because that could save you some money there. And then you can use this money to continue to keep investing and keep building your real estate portfolio. All right, folks. So that's really the basic walkthrough of how to get your first rental property and starting your journey with as little as $10,000. And you can be on your way to building wealth through real estate. What'd you think about those strategies? Have you thought about using any of them before? Have you actually used any of them before? We'd love to hear more from you. So please comment below and let us know what you think about these strategies. If you are ready to dive deeper into any of these steps or to get your next rental property, remember to like and subscribe to Bigger Pockets for all of their investing knowledge and insights. So until next time, this is Henry Washington, and I'll see you at the closing table. <laughs>